Yo, what's good YouTube? Zamcro here, aka Scoot, back with the Pokemon Battle Federation Season 6, and we're here for the Excuse me. We're here for the um the divisional finals of the Moon Conference for our sixth season of the Pokemon Battle Federation. We have LG YouTube, aka Andy aka Ninamoy Fanmo uh, Fanboy, coach of the St. Louis Carbinks, taking on Mank Deems 69 aka uh, Ramon, or um, Noodle, coach of the Toronto Star Raptors, who uh, both of them have very, very powerful squads. You can see uh, notable mons that each team didn't bring are like um, Megalopony and Salamence. Megalo Megalopony for the, the Star Raptors. Um, leading off with Zapdos here. I'm not sure what the idea behind the Zapdos lead was. Maybe predicting a Volcanion lead since uh, since um, he didn't have the best switch in to a Volcanion. So he just wanted to pressure it with Zapdos and knew he had switch ins for Mamoswine such as Skarmory. Um, Mamoswine chooses to get up rocks uh, and he chooses to get up rocks on turn one. So that's really good, especially considering um, three Mons take 25% and then... Um, the others will be chipped down as well. Um, he immediately defogs though, so that's good. But the Electros is now in, and it does have the type advantage. Um, could be a uh, could be a, a different kind of set instead of like an AV or like a, a U-turn protect set or something like that. It could be completely different. U-turn is a likely play though. Or he, or he doubles out into Volcano. That's a nice play. He gets uh, he gets the Alolan Muck uh, matchup versus his Volcanion now. Um, Volcanion is pretty free to just click uh, Spec Steam Eruption or something like that. Um, goes for the knockoff here though as he switches out into the Mega Mawal. Takes the knockoff like it's nothing. And the Alolan Muck. Um, I don't think it drops to a play rough. But it will do a lot. Uh, Mega Mawal is a pretty powerful mod. Likely going to go into the Arcanine here. A defensive Arcanine makes sense. Um, he didn't show Hypercutter. He showed Intimidate. So it's likely that the Arcanine gets the Intimidate off of his own. Like I said. Maybe a Toxic. Straight for the Iron Head. Which uh, it also makes sense. Um, I guess it hits. Uh, I guess it hits. No, I'm not sure what the why why he would choose to go Iron Head over Play Rough. I guess he didn't want to miss in case um, it stayed in, and then Iron Head. And if he got a flinch, it like Play Rough guaranteed knocked out um, the following turn. But uh, that's the only reason I can see why he would go Play Rough over over Iron Head on or Iron Head over Play Rough on that turn. He um, Noodle misses a huge Toxic there on the Volcanion, which is likely just going to be able to. Uh, repetitively come in and uh, or continuously come in and click that steam eruption I'm um, seeing now that like oh, well I guess he didn't know because he actually made a double I think it was the Alolan Muck though or maybe not but here I don't see any reason not to fire off a huge steam eruption Um, his only water resist, uh, Toronto Star Raptor's only water resist is Kieran Black, which isn't, like, isn't great to switch in on a Scald or a Steam Eruption due to the really high burn chance. So I'm not sure what the play is. He may have, uh, he may have, like, Wild Charge. Um, I don't see him being a Wild Charge set, though. Um, maybe Muck is an Assault Vest variant, and that might be his check. He goes into Zapdos hard here, and it's going to take a lot. It does, it does almost half. It does 43%. Huge chunk of damage there. I do I do see the Zapdos going for Roost here to, to stay healthy. Um, because if it comes in again, like, if he, if he doesn't Roost here, 
then the next time he comes in, he's uh, he's actually forced to roost, and if he's slower than the Volcanion, it could potentially two hit KO. He gets his Mammal Swat in here, though, likely to get up rocks again. Or, um, or he could double out, predicting the Skarmory to come back in and defog. He did bring the Skarmory in on his last, the last time he had the Mammal Swat in. I don't think we saw anything other than rocks from the Mammal Swan. Steam eruption from Volcanion. Um, what we, I don't think we saw anything from the Electros either. It, I think it double switched as soon as it came in. And uh, Mega Maw Wall went for the Iron Head. We have saw Toxic from Arcanine. Um, we have saw Roost from Zapdos. We have saw Defog from Skarmory. And Knockoff from the Alolan Muck. I think... Uh, I think it would be in Noodle's best interest to go back into Skarmory and defog the rocks away and then get hazards up of his own. And then it's going to really punish the constant switches that Andy is making and all the double switches that Andy makes as well. So same exact thing here as last time. Uh, he defogs as the Electros come in. Last time the Electros came in, the Alolan Muck came in, and he doubled out into the Volcano, catching the Alolan Muck, which, uh, which also just switched out anyway, and he didn't go for an attack. And the Mega Mawal took the knockoff from Alolan Muck. So let's see if there's a same series of plays here. wonder if both coaches will go for the same series, or if they will uh, change it up here, maybe go for something different. Um, it's still early in the match, so they don't necessarily need to make like a super aggressive play or anything like that. He does go into the hippo, so he does make a different play this time. And uh, yeah, yeah, maybe that's what Andy was predicting last time, was predicting the hippo to come in and double out into his Volcanion. This time he does go into the hippo as Andy doesn't make the Volcanion switch, and he does get his rocks up. Um, Chestnut. Uh, probably <laughs> infinitely walls a hip out on unless uh, there's a toxic thrown off um, likely that the chestnut outspeeds them if you go for sub and is likely to get up a spike here yep there it is it gets a spike up so if Toronto wants to if Noodle wants to get rid of the spike he's gonna have to get rid of his own rocks too which is uh, looks like Andy is likely to get his own rocks up again here and, and not too long like He'll be able to uh, pivot around on this Arcanine, get Mammal Swan back in, and get his rocks back up. Right. Kieran Black is yet to hit the field. Uh, Nihilego is yet to hit the field. I think everything else has hit the field. Speaking of Nihilego, huge toxic miss there. That toxic would have wore down Chestnut. Well, like that was a huge miss there. Both of them made a uh, Andy made a pretty aggressive play, staying in and clicking spikes. Um, it paid off for him because he dodged the toxic. But uh, yeah, really aggressive play. Maybe predicting um, him to switch back out. Maybe predicting Noodle to double, predicting his switch. And he throws off a spike there, and uh, yeah. Um, wow, that's a, that's a big play. Missing the toxic really sucks because the hippo has a hard time with chestnut. Zapdos has a hard time with chestnut. Um, yeah, that was huge. But he really didn't have a switch into this thing, so it kind of makes sense that he stayed in. So maybe the fire type move was the play. Yep, yep, flamethrower was definitely the play, I think, now. I think he was definitely trying to catch the Volcanion. And I think he's going to go for Toxic here again. Andy could make a, make a, another aggressive play. Which is not as aggressive because it's kind of a... It's like the mid-ground play. It covers Flamethrower and the Toxic. If he goes Nihilego, he has really high special defense anyway. Um, and can throw off a uh, Toxic Spike and force the Muck in eventually. Like if he wants to get the Muck in before anything gets poisoned, he would um, have to force that in. Um, and he would know that it would be 
like a constant switch between Muck, Skarm, and Zapdos to avoid Arcanine, Hippo, or Kieran being poisoned. And he does go into the Nihilego and the poison, like I said. Um, it's, uh, I'd say it's pretty likely that he goes into the Hippo here. Um, potentially goes into the Muck. Um, probably the Hippo, though. I think it's the better play. I think Hippo's the better play. Um, can slack off. Muck doesn't have the recovery and not need Muck for something else. Uh, really, if it's AV, it's it's still nice to keep around for Volcanion and uh, and the Lego late game. Getting swept by Beast Boost sucks. So he does switch out to the Alolan Muck. Um, it may not be AV. I could be completely wrong on that. He gets a crit there, so I can't really judge the damage. Um, he is Black Sludge, so he, he's not AV. Um, Black Sludge may have been shown earlier, and I might have missed it, so forgive me for that, if, if that's the case. And he gets the Pursuit off here and gets 62% off. Very nice play. To uh, Yeah, he's, he's a little on the back, so that is a nice uh, nice Pursuit there. Um, turn 20, no mods have died. That's pretty cool. Gets the fire punch off now and it doesn't do much as he doubles out to the volcanion but gets the poison from the from the uh, poison touch ability. So that's kind of big. Kind of I guess that makes up for the mist poison on the chestnut. Uh, not really though because that was uh, I think I would rather have chestnut poison other than the volcanion since volcanion's like a weak to rocks and it's gonna be taking all this chip anyway. Potentially take a pursuit here if he wants to double out again. That would be a nice, nice play. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what's the play here? I think he doesn't have a steam eruption switch in. Uh, Zapdos is likely the play here. So he could double out into uh, Nihilego. And uh, Noodle could stay in and click Pursuit. Predicting the Nihilego to come in on the Zapdos. Because if uh, if the Zapdos come, comes in again, it is like a free, uh, just another free power gen. It, it should, uh, should do a lot to the Zapdos. And uh, maybe... Maybe two hit KO Muck after the spike damage. Um, and, and he could just click Steam Eruption here. Zapdos could come in and get burned. Zapdos could come in and not get burned. Uh, it'll take about 40% uh, ish. Be able to roost up on this continuously. Get to a point where it doesn't feel threatened and uh, click discharge or thunderbolt he does just stay in and uh, both of them stay in and click uh, respective stab steam eruption and knock off very nice here uh, noodle could have the shadow sneak here and it might be able to pick off the volcanion i'm not sure it might take a little attack investment if it's no attack investment i really think that volcanion could potentially live here it's actually pretty bulky um i think it's bulky i've always had a hard time oak it like uh Mostly on the special side, though. Both of them taking their time on this play. It's kind of a, This is a big play, really. Um, if he's got the Shadow Snake and he switches out into something like... Um, the Mawal. Who's been... Okay, just goes for the steam eruption, knocks him out. Likely to die to poison here? Nope, doesn't. That's just a 12%. Okay, here, but he does die to rock, so he can't. Well, he can switch out and save it as uh, death fodder, um, which would be cool. The, yeah, probably, okay, the Arcanon comes in. So this thing has to be either extreme speed, protect. I wasn't gonna say protect. Okay, protect was the option that I wasn't gonna say, and that's the the outcome that it is. So that's pretty neat. The one thing I didn't think of is what it was. I was gonna say extreme speed, or uh, it's guaranteed to be outspeeding a max speed volcano. So volcano dies to the poison touch from muck. So muck and volcano basically killed each other, and now we have a five v five going here. And I think for the most part, everything's pretty healthy on both sides of the field. Um, and rocks are up on one side. 
two layers of spikes up on the other and um, what's been revealed stealth rock mammal swine volt switch electros power gem nihilego iron head mega mawal spiky shield and spikes chestnut that's for Andy and the St. Louis car banks and on the other side for on the side that we're uh, watching from we have the we have Noodle, coach of the Toronto Star Raptors, and he has a Kieran Black that has not touched the field yet. Skarmory with um, Defog. Zapdos with... Have we seen a move from Zapdos? Just Roost, I believe. Arcanine, we have seen Toxic Protect, Flamethrower. And Hippo, we have seen Rocks. Now we have Mammal Swine in versus the Arcanine here, and this is going to be interesting. I think that confirms that he is thick fat and not oblivious, which makes more sense in this match. Uh, thick fat makes more sense, I believe. Taking their time again. Turn 24. Goes into the hippo, maybe predicting the earthquake. Um, no leftovers, so most likely, no, definitely not smooth rock. He has nothing to take advantage of that. So he is uh, maybe Yachi Berry. Um, that's, a, that's a possibility. What I say? I meant to say Yachi Berry if I didn't. I might, I might have said Lachi Berry. Yeah, it's been on my mind lately. Um, definitely meant Yachi Berry, no matter what I said. And he goes into the mammal or the Skarmory on the Icicle Crash. Saves Hippo for maybe a sack or uh, a Nihilego switch in maybe. It could potentially be. He goes for the Iron Head after Mammal Swan gets his rocks up. So Hazard's definitely going to... I think Hazard, the Hazard War here is going to you know define the outcome of this match. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Most definitely. Iron Head knocks out the Mammal Swan. But, uh, I think Defog is the play here. Defog is the play. Yeah. Defog here, and now go out to Mammal Swan. I mean, uh, hip, uh, hip out on. This thing could have Volt Switch and U-Turn, though. So that would be cool. Um, if it had, like, double, you know. I've ran double, you know, Volt Switch and U-Turn on things like Top of Coco, uh, um, Zapdos, even. The thunderuses, and then if my opponent brings the ground top, then I quit U-turn until that ground top's gone, and then uh, can spam bolt switch. So yeah, I could see that happening. I could see it having both. That's cool. It's a possibility. So big, big toxic miss earlier, and then the, uh, and then the poison touch on the volcano after that. So uh, hex has been kind of even, I would say. Semi even, you know. Um, I think a good play here is going into uh, going into maybe chestnut and starting to lay spikes back up again. Maybe force the Zapdos or the Skarmory back in and uh, getting the Hilego in and fire, uh, firing off some power gems. Uh, Weaken this thing especially. I think it potentially slack off now if uh, if the Electros can't knock it out, which it, it probably can't. Uh, hippo is really really fat. <laughs> it's uh it's yeah it was it has a hippo design for a reason. It's uh fat as fuck. 
Yep, gets a slack off off. And yeah, he does go into the chestnut, as I said. Potentially lay up a spike once again. Maybe throw off a leech seed if he has it. I don't know if he does. Um, that's a possibility. Seed bomb's a possibility too. Um, he has shown spike and spiky shield though. Frederick versus 50. Turn 30. Goes hard into the Arcanine. On the wood hammer. Okay, so it reveals wood hammer. Um, maybe predicting rocks. Uh, maybe predicting, you know, just to trade rocks for spikes or something like that. Or uh, throw up rocks on a sp spiky shield. That was a play that could have happened. Um, goes hard into the arc, and I think that was the best play. Definitely the best play in my opinion. Now I can throw off a pretty free flamethrower. Can throw off a toxic uh, as well. I think flamethrower is his best play. Uh, his only switch in really is Nihilego. Um, Electros can take a hit, I guess. I mean, it can. Um, but, yeah. Chestnut and Mega Mawal aren't taking it well. And now Nihilego is pretty chipped down too. So this Arcanine could be key. Um, could be a key component in the end game here, being able to take out the Chestnut and the Mega Mawal. And as long as Skarmory, Skarmory is around, Mammal Swine's Earthquake isn't really a scary thing. And Hippo being able to infinitely wall Nihilego here. Wow. See, that's why the poison on Volcanion was so huge. Uh, didn't need to lose as much HP and could potentially still be alive. Just clicking steam eruption, blowing through things like Skarmory and Hippo and uh, Arcanine. That's uh, pretty scary. And right here, Chestnut would be taking residual damage and toxic damage. So, yeah. It'd be tough, but Volcano would be a key component here. And it really let loose, Volcano being gone, really let loose for the Arcanine too, so I think that's pretty important. But if this Hippo goes down, Nihilego's got a really, really good chance of running through uh, Noodle's team as well. If he, gets a, if he gets his own layer of rocks up, I think uh, Nihilego is at like 13%, so it guaranteed he lives on rocks. And, um, if it gets, uh, rocks, if Mammal Swan gets rocks back up, then, uh, Skarmory's Sturdy is broken, and if Nihilego gets a kill, it could potentially just run through the teams, uh, with Hippo being so low. Yeah, that's really scary. Um, especially if, uh, Nihilego is not Scarfed, and it can switch its moves up, um, so that it can guarantee two-hit KO the Hippo. And it's just, you know, outspeeding base 100s. Yeah, that's really problematic for uh, Noodle as well. So keeping Hippo around is pretty essential at this point. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I think what he needs to do here is... Uh, so the roost is definitely coming from the scarm. I think the switch into Mammal Swine is, I mean, into Electros is the play. And then double out into Mammal Swine and get your rocks up. Goes out to the Electros. Oh, he got the Cure in Black in. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I like that. Oh, wow. There's not, there's a, like... <laughs> Kieran Black has no switch in. None. Uh, if you can think of one, let me know. Literally, let me know in the comment section. This is not like a rhetorical. This is, I'm, I'm being honest, let me know. Because, uh, I, like, Kieran Black has a really, really nice move pool. And in the draft format, you can build Kieran's to break through whatever counter your opponent may have. So, that's important. 
for Shaq's encounters to Kieran Black. Earth power, Earth power is knocking out three of the last five of these months. Um, did it re reveal life orb? I wasn't paying attention. Darn it. <laughs> it's always something with me. Let's see here. What's he going to do? Mind you guys, this is, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Pokemon Battle Federation Season 6 quarterfinals. Um, we have the Toronto Star Raptors taking on the St. Louis Carbinks. Um, Andy and his Carbinks being the number 2 seed, and Noodle and his Toronto Star Raptors being the number 3 seed. Winner advances to the Moon Conference Finals. So Ice Beam is the likely move to come out here and everything dies from it. So, And uh, what doesn't die is the Mega Maw Wall which dies to Earthquake or the Earth Power in the following turn. Which came out. Ooh. Uh, I, I just don't know what the... <laughs> yeah, it just definitely has to play around it a lot. That's, that's all you can really do. Same thing for the Mega Maw Wall. If, uh, well... Noodle has two of the best counters to Mega Maw Wall in the game, uh, Hippo and Arcanine, and I guess Skarmory to an extent. Um, like I think Skarmory's two hit KO'd with Thunder Punch, Adamant Thunder Punch. Not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. Um, but uh, I don't think it has a move to hit Arcanine with or Hippo with that will two hit KO. Um, like if they're max defensive or defensive enough to not be too KO'd. So, and Arcanine's faster, which I think it's uh, with no speed, I think it's faster. And there's the Thunder Punch that I mentioned uh, for the Skarmory. Um, potentially has the, has the Sucker Punch here to get some extra chip off before um, dying here to the following turn. Because, uh, well, he could save this thing. It doesn't die to rocks at 8%. Um, so there's that. Yep. No sucker punch. Uh, probably predicting uh, potentially a morning sun and just wanted to get some more damage off. Maybe want to throw off another thunder punch into sucker punch. That seems like a likely play that I would have made so I can see if that was the case. Um, now we got a 5v4 on turn 41, so finally making a little progress. Brings in the Mammal Swine here, so, um, Arcanine has shown, what, Toxic Protect Flamethrower? Um, I don't think it's shown anything else. It might have shown Morning Sun, I don't know if it has. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, on turn 42. Switches out into the Mammal Swine, or the Hippo, <laughs> I've, I've said Mammal Swine every time the Hippos come in. Uh, the Hippo as the Mammoth Swine actually gets rocks up, which is, uh, that's dope. That helps, that helps out, um, Nihilego so much. Uh, Nihilego just become a huge, huge threat. And the, the Hippo goes down to the Icicle Crash. There is no switching for Nihilego now. Any kind of chip on anything is just, uh, putting Nihilego in a position to win. Yeah, Lockley just goes into this thing, uh, clicks Icicle Crash until he can't anymore, and then goes into the Electros and just Volt Switches out. Yeah, just Volt Switches around until he can get the kill. Or he goes hard into the Electros. Uh-oh, saved the Mammoth Swan. On the Iron Head, survived it. Easily survived it. Takes another one. No, 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 not after Sandstorm damage. So is the Electros faster than the Skarmory is the question now. And can get this... Thunderbolt off, Thunderbolt off, Thunderbolt knocks out probably just only the Skarmory probably. Um, I forgot what percent Arcanine is at, so. 
Um, yeah. Still, still liking the Lagos chances here. Um, Electros has to be faster than Skarmory here. Has to be. And he, and he saves the Skarmory. So, really nice because he needs to. He needs to do that for the uh, Nihilego. I think he goes into Nihilego here and clicks Power Gym and picks up a kill. I think that's the play. Has to be the play. Could go into Mammal Swine and click Ice Shard or Icicle Crash, but he doesn't actually know if he's faster. And I think Heat Wave definitely picks up the knockout at this range. Maybe even Hidden Power Ice. Uh, a little bit more unlikely though. Um, I think Nihilego's the play. Just click Power Gem, see how much it does to the Skarmory. Because um, the rest of the Mons just die, really. Uh, and if Skarmory's too hit KO'd, then I think that's game. Unless uh, unless Arcanine has like Extreme Speed. If Arcanine has the Extreme Speed, then Nihilego uh, dies, yep, at 3%. Definitely dies. So, well, let's find out. Let's find out right here. It shows that does have leftover, so we know it's not Charty Berry, and we know it's not uh, Choice Scarfed. So Nihilego naturally outspeeds and should be at least uh, speed creeping Zapdos at the very least. Gets the knockout. Gets the beast boost. Special attack rise. All right. All right. Now if uh, Kirim. Or Arcanine. If Kirim isn't Scarfed. Okay, first of all, if Nihilego Scarfed and uh, Arcanine doesn't have Extreme Speed, then the Nihilego sweeps here. Second of all, if Arcanine doesn't have Extreme Speed and Kirim Black isn't Choice Scarfed. Did I just say that? Okay, if Kirim Black is Scarfed, it can come in and kill... The, uh, the Nihilego, if it is not Scarfed. But if the Nihilego is Scarfed and the uh, Arcanine doesn't have Extreme Speed, it's just plain over. That's that's the guaranteed thing. That's the only thing guaranteed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, if the Kirim is Scarfed and the Nihilego isn't Scarfed, it looks like, uh, looks like the Kirim could uh, sweep with Ice Beam. Certainly. Um, but like I said, Kirim has thrown off an attack earlier and I did not see if it was life orb or not. So if it's life orb here, then, uh, then the Nihilego is going to outspeed and it does. And it picks up another, uh, special attack boost. And I think that is a game. I think that's going to be a game. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think Skarmory can live this one. Uh, potentially the first one. Um, if you wanted to switch out to Skarmory on the first power gym instead of letting Zapdos go down I think that was maybe the play but uh, it looks like uh, looks like the Nihilego is going to sweep through here um, if the Arcanine had extreme speed it should have came in sooner yeah it does not and that's going to be game and the St. Louis Carbinks are going to be moving on and facing uh, me in the semifinals. oh yeah we're going to be playing in the moon conference finals of uh, yeah Pokemon Battle Federation season number 6 and yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this battle. Pretty uh, pretty long, uh, about 30, a little over 30 minutes long, um, live recorded. And yeah, good game to both guys. Uh, I think you guys both played well. And it, uh, especially in the early game, man, it's like a game of chess. You guys are just playing back and forth. And yeah, it had to come down to the end. 4-0 uh, definitely does not reflect how close the game was because uh, literally all these mods are like, 20% or, le or less, or like 30% or less or something. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, good game again to both. And I'll see you, Andy, in the conference finals next week. And uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.